Tivall Landscape Committee, invite residents who are serviced by Down to Earth to this virtual town meeting. The meeting is hosted by Down to Earth Account Manager, William Billy Ditzel, and Sandoval Landscape Committee Chair, Allison Johnson. With participation from Sandoval General Manager Casey Pinella and Board President Kathy Conway. The live stream is simulcast on Sandoval Communications Facebook page, Sandoval Cape Coral. And on Sandoval's Neighbors Synergy page. Alternate viewing of this meeting is also available for your convenience 24-7 on the Sandoval Video Box channel, found on YouTube, and on Sandoval's website, www.livesandoval.com. Consider subscribing to Sandoval Video Box on YouTube by clicking both the subscribe button and bell to be notified of future meetings and presentations by Sandoval Communications. The meeting will begin shortly. Sandoval Communications thanks you for your participation by watching this meeting. Hello and welcome everyone to today's Sandoval Community Association's Town Hall with representatives from Down to Earth. Joining us today we have Tom Tremblay and A.J. Price, they're back with us today. And also accompanying them is um, Billy Ditzel, did I say that right? Billy Ditzel, who's the on-the-grounds manager here now in Sandoval. Also joining me today are um, our general manager, Casey Pinella, and Allison Johnson, our resident volunteer and the landscape committee chairperson. So I want to again welcome you all back. This town hall is a follow-up to our June 25th board meeting where Down to Earth joined us to address ongoing efforts as well as concerns raised by residents at that time. So Down to Earth on June 25th identified a 60-day time frame would be necessary to turn things around and get back on track with meeting the contracted scope of work as well as the service levels. Um, so at this time, I'm going to give the floor to our representatives with um, Down to Earth so they can provide us with a um, status report or progress report um, regarding ongoing efforts. And then I'm going to ask the general manager to share the resident feedback she's in receipt of and um, give our colleagues at Down to Earth an opportunity to comment. So at this time, I'll turn the floor over to Tom and to AJ. And again, welcome back. Thank you for Thank coming. Thank you. Thanks for having us again. Good afternoon. Um, so uh, the, the last meeting a couple months ago, uh, obviously there were lots of uh, concerns and questions and pressures in the community for, for our services that we were providing. Um, some of our takeaways from that meeting were, were uh, some communication issues we were having, management issues on the ground. Um, we mentioned that day that we were going to be making a change uh, operationally with the community. Um, at which point we did, uh, right after that meeting, we assigned Billy uh, the account management role in uh, Sandoval. Um, some other uh, commitments that, that we uh, needed to change were how we communicated what we were doing. So we put together a new schedule. Uh, we implemented a new selective prune process. Um, and that schedule, it was submitted for the month, and then weekly updates are given to uh, Allison and, of course, the, the property manager. Um, it, our commitments to those each week is a follow-up um, specifically related to where we're at against the schedule. Uh, obviously, um, we did this in the midst of the beginning of the summer, um, and sometimes some of those schedules uh, can and can't be kept. So for the most part, the first month went really, really smooth. We had a couple streets fall behind. Um, and this month, we're, we're running due to, and I'm sure everyone here who lives in Sandoval knows, we've had some daily rains rather than afternoon rains which have made it a little bit more difficult for us to keep up with that schedule, but we're giving the weekly submission. So right now as a whole, um, in, in, a, in a generality, we are approximately four days behind the schedule that we submitted beginning of the month, which we've been updating uh, weekly. Um, I'm gonna let AJ talk specifically about um, where, what, where we're at in the schedule, what the schedule was, um, and sorry and what we're going to do to uh, make sure that it's caught up and we're on track. And then we have some things that uh, were scheduled to begin this week that I know are some of the issues that we might, we might hear about today with some perimeter hedges and things like that that we did have scheduled that are gonna start off next week. They pushed by a week. So um, AJ, why don't you go, th go through the actual schedule? Absolutely. Good afternoon. Um, I'll go down street by street starting from the southern entrance off of uh, I apologize, I call it midpoint, but uh, midpoint extension. So Greendale Place in Woodbourne, 
they, uh, they both had a, a full trim completed and that date was on, that was on the 29th. So the first week, July 1st, it was completed, Greendale Woodbourne. Um, it's also had a selective trim. Actually, it's, it's in place right now. It should have been done last week, but once again, because we're delayed from the rain, they're on there, they're over there now. Uh, please remember that the weed control takes place after both the pruning cycle and the selective trim cycle. So each time a road is pruned, whether it's full prune or selective prune, the weed control team comes behind, which you, you will see them over on Greendale and Woodbourne right now, which is about a month since it's been, it's been uh, uh, recently treated because of the full prune. So it's about a month worth of growth, and they're, they're taking care of it today with, with the weeds. So they're on it now, whether it rolls into tomorrow or not. Um, all grasses on Greendale and Woodburn have also, have also been sprayed for mites, so we cut them back and sprayed them. Hopefield has had the same work completed on it, with the exception of the selective trim, because once again we are behind, and they were scheduled for a perimeter trimming this week, but with being the four days the four days behind, it's going to be pushed over till next week. So we will have additional crews in tomorrow, as we have been, and um, get that taken care of. Clairefont and Astwood, Astwood, full trim has been completed. Um, a selective trim was done before the before the full trim on that on that street. We had some pre-emergence applied uh, to help with the weed with the weed growth, and we've also been adding additional additives into the weed solution, the herbicide solution for the bed weeds, which is starting to, it's starting to die, kill off some of that pilea that you guys see, the spongy green weed. Um, we'll have to do repeat treatments on that to keep it, to keep it killed, but we're going to continue doing that until it's, until it's all, all gone. Anguilla. Uh, Anguilla is one of the, sh Be Belleville and Anguilla are one of the few streets that were affected in July schedule. We, we're on schedule to do a full prune, but we ended up doing a selective, and that's scheduled to follow the the perimeter trimming that's on for this month. We did do a selective trim on Anguilla and Belleville, but it, it is it is due for a full trim, which will be done, you know, once you know per the calendar, just minus the days that we are behind. And that's Belleville and Anguilla. I'm just going to combine those two together. All the grasses have been sprayed for mites, um, and the uh, pre-emergence added there as well. Cassaberry and Lavatka, the full trim has been completed. Cassaberry is in progress right now. They're on that street today. The beds have also been sprayed for mites. Vareo has had a full has had a full prune, and a selective as well because it was selective pruned, you know, last month, and then a full prune this month. <clears throat> Lambay, Lambay as well has had the uh, has had the full full prune and selective prune. The perimeter is in progress. That's that's um, scheduled here with the perimeter hedges. So the hedges in, that's splitting the street, just like Vareo, those are all those are all scheduled to be done on the perimeter hedge date on the calendar. And in the future, as we're on those roads, we're going to take care of those hedges. So it's not it's not going to be a separate line item in the schedule. It'll just be done the weeks that we're on those roads. We had to prioritize, and we prioritized getting the the homes done first, getting everything trimmed and up to par, and then the hedges were put secondary. <clears throat> the grasses have all been sprayed for mites on that road as well. Melita, same thing, full trim was completed. Uh, Kea's, full trim, full trim completed. Um, basically, basically, every home has been touched since, since we have last, uh, since our last meeting, and, and actually everything would have had a full prune by next week if it wasn't for our weather delays so for the submission of the calendar that, that, that we created 
we would have been, this meeting comes, falls about one week before we would have completed the entire cycle of the calendar that we submitted. Um, some things that are specific on that calendar, such as the perimeter trimming, were plans put in place for the first, the first 60 days so that we could get it all uh, touched and caught up. But going forward, that calendar will get a little tighter. So for example, like if you, if you drive, if you're a resident on uh, Greendale and Woodbourne <clears throat> in the cycle, that when we did all the weed applications and pulling of the weeds on those streets, you can tell that the weed pressure, if you're a resident on that street, is, is apparent, the, especially with the smaller perimeter hedges, the little Indian hawthorn, ilex shilling, the plants like that, you're going to see that there's a lot of weed pressure coming through those plants. And again, that's not Roundup spraying. That's, a, that's a top, uh, an over-the-top top selective herbicide that needs to be applied there again. And on top of that, we're pulling it. So today, would have been in the cycle where they're at. So a schedule is always designed that right around the time that we're coming full, full circle with our schedule, ideally you should see that that street is having the most amount of pressure and is obviously needs to be done. And, and that's the design of a, of a good schedule. In the winter, obviously, easy to keep a schedule. In the summer, depending upon the amount of rain and, and the weather pattern that we get, you might have different types of, of pressures, especially with weeds. So I would say in looking at it today that if going back in time, that calendar and the schedule we submitted, we were about a week off in the pressure that I'm seeing in weeds in there. But fortunately, they were there. So I mean, half the street right now is done. Um, there's piles of weeds on everybody's front yard that we're hand pulling on top of spraying. Um, one thing to note that I think is important, that was one of the, one of the action plans we came up with on the last meeting was specific to these different types of pre-emergence that we're using. So there's two, I don't, you probably have seen um, a separate spray rig coming around the community spraying all of the shrubbery. Um, that is a different type of selective herbicide. And on top of that, we've been applying in the tank with the, the regular weed control, the, the uh, Roundup, we've, we've been doing additives to that that are specific as pre-emergent and to take out one of the weeds. The, the little spongy weed he mentions called pilea, it's not kill it. You can't kill it with Roundup. So I know everybody, it, 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 we think that uh, Roundup kills everything, but it does not, and that's one of them. So we have a separate herbicide that's selective in there that we are treating that with to get, to get that under control. Um, but again, so each month g moving forward, we will adjust the calendar, and as we've been doing, we'll continue to commit to, if we felt like this week, like I said, we're four days behind on that calendar, we're going to continue to backfill that. And I think my guess is we'll need to do that through the warmer months. The second we have a couple cool nights in the fall, I don't see us having to, to bring in the extra uh, manpower and pressure to keep things up. Um, as they get started on the perimeter hedging, obviously it's, 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 a, it's their massive hedges. It's a lot of work that needs to be done. Um, so we're going to take that day by day. Billy's got a plan in place as to how he's going to use and who's going to do it. Um, and we're going to, we're going to take that day by day and see where we're at. If we need to bring in extra crews to trim those, we will. We've got one scheduled for next week. Okay. Correct. Um, just for clarification regarding the perimeter hedges, um, I understand between the two streets, for example, um, part of Vareo backs up to Vareo, south and north, and there's a fence. I don't know if the fence is the entire way, but then there's some tall shrubs. So that will be done with the perimeter hedging. But then you said that afterwards, once it's done, that it will be done regularly when the folks, when the crew are on the streets. So is it when they're on the streets doing the weekly lawn care or when they're on the streets doing what? Scheduled trimming. Yes, training. when they're doing the, yeah. scheduled the scheduled trimming. So ideally what this calendar okay. will look Just like so in the... people understand. Correct, yeah. So in the future, you know, we had, we had to tackle this, and again, in the, in the, in the heaviest growing season. So right. the calendar, we had a lot of stuff to fit in there and get to. So we, we kind of prioritized what were the biggest, the things that we heard in the last meeting. You know, when everybody right. read through, there were lots of things that people were concerned about. There was yeah. some quality of mowing. There were, some, there were lots of things that we needed to address and change in the way that we processed the community. Mm -hmm. So we prioritized what was the hottest button issues for this, okay. this initial set of the first couple of months to see if that selective prune would work. And what we found, what we found, like in the weekly meetings that are being held, 
you know, I think, what was it, eight, five out of the eight had really positive feedback for us in regards to specifically the, the selective prune, whereas before they were waiting for us to come and just absolutely trim everything in their yard. Right. And now what they do is they go ahead, per the calendar, they, they selectively prune the heavier growing material. Bougainvillea this time of year, mm -hmm. they're going to grow a, a foot and a half a week. You know, there's, there's some material that just grows so much faster than the other material. Mm -hmm. So we're going ahead selectively pruning that and coming back. As, the, as the, the season cools down and we start to get a little bit more control, those hedges will be done at the same time we're processing that street. So okay. if we're on Greendale, as example, or the, the one you were mentioning, if there's a perimeter hedge that needs to be done with it, it'll be processed with it at the same time. Okay. Um, and I think, did you want to raise a point? Or but you said you're bringing in an extra crew to hit the hedges? Or we, do have a he we do have an extra crew. Billy's guys just getting over time, or is it... A different crew coming in, or no? We have a different trim crew scheduled to come in. So then it, it's not going to hold him back because they're so big and so thick, and it's going to be so. Yeah, much it's going to be a combination of work between his guys and their guys, as long as they keep up I'm, with their schedule. Yeah, my concern was it's just going to slow him down on his schedule, and then he's going to be behind the eight ball again. If it's not different guys coming in to do specifically the Hope Field hedges, because they're the ones that are so massive. Yeah. Um, that that was just a question or concern that it, he had with that. We plan to do it in combination. His guys, depending upon where we're at in the schedule and the calendar. Okay. So like I said, we're four days behind on that today. Yeah. I just so, hated for him to get but bogged we're down no, again we're not gonna, because those hedges yeah. are so, so bad. Behind, Correct. And you are planning to take on even more work, then how are you going to get ahead? Right. And that's our plan. So, yeah. so an extra as break. an example, tomorrow yeah. we have eight people scheduled to come in. So that would have been like having two extra people here all week, you know. So it, it, it's in the, the, they're only coming in here tomorrow specifically to catch up on where we're behind on per the calendar and the schedule. And then um, we had some mention just before the meeting of the pavers with the weeds. Is this the same thing that you were talking about in the shrub bushes that they're um, Roundup resistant? And Is it the little fluffy one that comes up out of the pavers? In some instances. Yeah. yeah. So we've, we've changed the tank mix. So that when they're spraying that, so it does. It is Roundup, and it's also the, yeah. the other selective herbicide to treat that. It's and again, that down. weed, that weed, unfortunately, won't yeah. die. In, yeah. It won't die in one application. But mm -hmm. as we continue to hit it, it, do it. Okay. it doesn't. What we've got in there, it doesn't only kill it. It also is going to prevent it from coming up. Okay, and that's right. what we've really been working through. I think right. if you if you drive the community today and to talk specifically about weeds, what you're going to find is the ones coming up specifically out of the plants that are in the hedges, that are more difficult to access, obviously, the roots to pull them, mm -hmm. those ones are still giving us, giving us some problems. Right. Um, the beds themselves, where there aren't plants, those pre-emergents are really starting to work because you're not seeing the same amount of germination that we had two months ago. There's far less weed pressure in the actual mulch beds themselves. Okay. okay. And then there was um, some individuals on Belleville that had special events coming up that Billy said he'd get back there for so is he going to be able to still meet that um, request that they had He'd, or now are you going to wait till what Tom said was the schedule for Belleville Anguilla he's not on uh, mic we, we will, I wanted to start at least on the perimeter trim on the side of the perimeter trim is that what you're talking no, about no 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 there Belleville there was resident. some work order special requests homeowners had special events because you guys skipped Belleville Anguilla's side yards and backyards the last time and their bushes are you can't walk up between the houses it's up high in their lanai's because they got skipped that time that yeah. AJ mentioned so we have some special events that you guys were notified of and the homeowners made special requests to right get those, their oh, side yes. yards and lanai's done. Those have been completed. For them, yeah, excellent. Yes. It's already you. done. Yeah, yeah that was my okay, concern when, when you said that, and I thought, oh, no, here we go. To and that's really kind again. of the, the idea is that, you know, obviously we submit a schedule on the calendar. We right. try sure. right. to, yeah. to hit it. And, and, and when we don't, that's how we're going to plan for next time. And mm -hmm. really it was how is this selective prune going to go? What kind of feedback were we going to get? Were people right. going to be okay with it? Because it, what they were so used to is if they saw a guy holding a hedge trimmer in their yard they expected everything to be done yeah. which is that's how it was scheduled so that that's that's understandable so we weren't quite sure how the community was going to take it if a guy came and did some hand pruning did a couple bit of trimming and then left they might think that we're not completing it so it looks as if the selective pruning as long as we can stick to that calendar and the schedule is going to work 
and be a plus side to the a positive to the community. Yeah, and I would say initially there was a, there were there were a few people that were concerned, like, hey, you guys came and trimmed, but you didn't trim everything. Yeah, there's a and, lot of that. And once we explained it, mm -hmm. then they yeah. were, oh, okay, so you're you're actually They're scheduled okay for with next that week. Now. They were okay with it, so. It yeah. falls back to communication. Yeah, no, this was just that special thing where you guys had to skip yeah. in the schedule those yeah. two streets. But there were people that had events coming up, life events. Yeah. And so we just want to make sure that their properties were good yes. and not they, waiting on this completed. next schedule. We're good there, there's okay. a house that's being painted that, that's been completed. And there okay. were two houses that they couldn't get through. Okay. And that's been completed. Thank you, Billy. Yeah. Yeah. Anything, and, um, any work order on the Bellevue and in Gila has, has been taken care of. Thank you. Good. We um, we did see some positive feedback regarding Fabian, right? Fabian, Fabian with the irrigation, yeah, the irrigation and setting He's the um, the timers yeah. and on his own initiative. When he saw some dry spots, he you know flipped everything on to check to see if the water was hitting those areas or what the issue was. So um, I know many residents commented about his efforts and they were appreciated. So at this time, I'll turn the floor over to our general manager, Casey, who again has um, uh, comments that were forwarded by residents and um, let Great. her present those and then we'll just go one by one. Okay. You read them and then you guys will have the opportunity to um, respond to them. Yep. So I think just, um, and with some of these, um, they may or may not have been completed yet, uh, but I would say that Getting to a place where work orders are not becoming so consuming um, is a common theme that we're all taking the time to continue to do this um, is something that we feel should be within your contract of, you know, taking care of the issue to where it's not so much work orders going on to where it's consuming. Um, so the first one we have, uh, Carolyn uh, Schwab who's on Anguilla, and I might pronounce the names wrong, but I live, uh, I live at the above address, want to understand, clarify when hedge trimming occurs, see attached photos, hedges, trees between my house and neighbors overgrown, blocking path and door to my lanai. I did submit a work order hoping to hear from them. So- And what date is on this? What's the date uh, on that? This one is uh, Monday. So that's- so we can follow up, Billy, with the, you can see that. Yeah, these sure. will, I, the, I want the work orders to be completed, so I'm going to send you okay. these so that you can take care of them. But I mean, I think an example is if someone can't walk through to get to their backyard because the hedges are so overgrown, that should be something you know, a work order shouldn't have to be placed. It should be taken care of automatically. Correct. So ideally, how that would, how that would, that is the purpose of the selective prune. So again, I think we're trying to hash through the, the the, <laughs> the 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 how it's going to play out because if it ideally if the selective prune guys go ahead to that street mm -hmm. and that's one of the pressure issues on that street it might be Bougainville on one street and it might be the, the, a small area in between a home on the next that's kind of the idea of it is that we would hit those so hot you're button things considering that so you're saying that something in between homes is going to be on a separate schedule no I mean, it, the full trim is the full trim cycle this but in between be the a, full trim a part I don't of think a full Tom's trim following that that address because he's not in town all the time but aj and billy probably do that okay. is where anguilla and belleville got skipped off the last schedule so this is totally separate than what the point you're making okay yeah. Yeah, and I think it's just because Tom's not in town, he's not recognizing yeah. that address. Yeah, it wasn't, okay. I, yeah, right. I agreed. But yeah, I, so he's saying the right thing, but it doesn't pertain to this question. Right, I'm not, I didn't mean yeah. that specific to this one event. I just meant yeah. that's a perfect example of a type of issue that the, the selective right. prune is meant to avoid, is that regardless of the street, Anguilla, yep. any street in here, so, they all have different pressures and issues. So the process may issues. have worked right. if you had Correct. skipped Anguilla and Beville and the Co last well, time of the schedule. Well, definitely it would have, right. Yeah, if we, right. Didn't, if we did the... And that's the result sure. of that. Yeah, yeah okay. because now you're, now you're talking uh, three weeks to four weeks since that's been done, and it was only a selective prune rather than a the full prune. A full prune. Mm -hmm. right. Whereas that moving forward, that, sh that should not be an issue. And keeping an eye, you know, it, just because it may not fall under a specific category, having that eye to say... This really is overgrown no matter when it's falling on a schedule. Let's take care of that. Agreed. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. All right. Yep. So the next one I'll move to is going to be uh, Belleville. And this is Jim and Beth uh, Bell Meehan. Bell uh, Belleville. Okay. Is that? Okay, good. Um, 
one side of my property is too close to the next house for the riding mower to cut the grass. The contract states the contractor shall use appropriate mower type and size of each area of turf to ensure a proper cut. And the next line it says grass shall be mowed to a height consistent with requirements, but never lower than three and a half inches. This is not happening. Instead, the crew is using uh, stringers to scout the lawn almost down to the bare dirt. Uh, when will down to earth, get a hand mower um, and be able to actually mow these areas without damaging the grass. And that was an um, issue on Vareo previously. Yeah, so, so that, that's, that's, if you give us the address afterwards, we'll go ahead and take care of it. But majority of the homes we do have, we did purchase a smaller mower and we are going through the streets with, with smaller mowers. When did if that start? That started about a month and a half to two months ago. Okay. And that's Thank a 36 you. inch. That's a 36 a inch. If there is an area there. that's smaller, we have put plenty of push mowers. We can definitely start taking care of those areas. Another issue to keep in mind in, in, in a lot of these areas where they are too tight is the lack of sunlight due to the houses being close and mm -hmm. the bushes, that the grass is not going to grow as fast anyway. But regardless, push mower absolutely and if you give us that address we'll make sure we take care of it in any other small areas okay we will we'll push mo okay was that belleville and yeah. the yeah. next one is uh Barrio court and Barrio. yeah okay um let's see down to earth um i would like to submit a question oh sorry this is uh david ott I would like to submit a question for Thursday's meeting uh, with Down to Earth, but first I wanted to commend Billy on the improved quality of work that has taken place in the last six weeks. Thank you. Um, I submitted some issues for the June board meeting and one of the issues is still outstanding. A section of the fence was damaged when they cut the grass in June and nothing has been done to repair it. I'm attaching photos I sent back in June and would like an update to when this problem would be corrected. Um, this one didn't print in color, but uh, this is yeah, um, on their fence, um, a, a gouge in their fence, yes. and then can markings on the so, fence. Yes. So it's approved, and really I'm he waiting for the mic, fence so people. Can you pass yeah, no, he does. He has one. He's got a mic. Oh, pardon me. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, we, he had an extra. So it's been approved, and we're, we're going to take care of it. I'm waiting for the fence people to, to come out and do their we, part. The fence people have the approval to do the work. We don't know the date. We'll follow up I'll with follow the date. Up. Okay. Do you have you been communicating that to the resident or I I, I didn't. I'm not aware of um, it. But I, I, okay. I did it one time so and I, I let them know that it would be taken care of. Maybe let Allison know and mm -hmm. if, okay. just to communicate that so well, I can well, respond when you get a date. Not a problem. What I'll do is I'll make a note and I'll I'll call the fence company because I approved it and actually Great. we had to pay the deposit which is already paid. So uh, I'll let you. I'll I'll let them know. Mr. Ott, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, and I can give you the address after. I, I have it. I have it on the okay. email thread. Yeah, and the, I, have, and the I have that same everything. picture and everything. Would you see me on that? You got it. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. We've got Greendale and Woodburn. Um, I'd like to make a statement. We paid down to earth um, for landscaping. They ask us to monitor, police their work via a work order. Ridiculous. They should monitor and police their own workers. I see value in work orders for some things, but not for everything. What do seasonal residents do? I've attached a sample of photos that show how bad their work continues to be. The palm tree trimming this year was terrible. I'm not sure. Did you guys do the palm tree trimming in the individuals? Yeah. Okay. Uh, worst trim ever. A resident's hibiscus tree fell over and was told that they would have to pay $20 to have it restaked. We never had to pay for this service before. After resident agreed to pay, they restaked it and trimmed it again. Told resident the reason it fell over was because it was too top heavy. If it was trimmed properly, when they were trimming, it would not have fallen over. I don't know if you want to address, you want me to keep going? You want me to pause? Okay, well, what would be I'll, more? I will address it because, okay, what's So let's happening just, is with the palm trimming, trimming, when is the next planned uh, palm tree trimming or this just took place. What it, was going on there? The the palm trimming is annually. Okay. Yeah, it's it's one it's one swift trim annually. And I want to say that took place in June. Mm -hmm. It was June. It was June. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Were you guys supervising that or? Correct. Who, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we were. So no comments to the horrible tree trimming. It, it's, or, I mean, what what's 
We what's proper for one person is not for the other. So if they let us know how they want their trees trimmed one year, we'll let them know. A lot of people were asking us to hurricane cut them, and we don't do that. We trim to proper ANSI standards, we, we, so we can. That was in process, actually, when we had this last meeting. And, that, and one of the people we had met that um, um, just that week prior during that pruning was a request to have more of a hurricane cut, which is not a horticultural practice we do. So um, I'd just like to know what, what specifically the palm pruning, I don't know what specifically didn't like about it. It could be that we weren't aggressive enough. It, which, which I think that is, uh, there are attached, and, and that's what I believe in looking at the photos. Um, it just dawned on me that I was quickly looking through. Some of them are, are drooping. They're not there, clean looking. There was an issue, um, which we were on top of, um, and we contacted them all the time. Um, some of the homeowners didn't realize what a good trim is supposed to be, mm -hmm. and we had put out flyers and news things and it's still on the web page okay. you know like three o'clock nine o'clock not one o'clock two o'clock um but some nicking was occurring and so the week after anywhere that Fall. the that they had nicked yeah. it was like straight down it looked like a hurricane had come through a week after they had trimmed mm -hmm. so they had the company come back and catch all of those okay so but I, the majority of the trees were done beautifully okay. um, some people like a real trim look and they're not happy unless it's I even accused them of onioning a tree yeah, <laughs> I sent pictures and it, somebody else had had hired it privately done and it wasn't these oh. folks <laughs> there used what to be there used to be that used to be the method but then it was In proven the after days. I want to say I want to say Irma or Charles I forget which hurricane it was right they did a study that showed that the palms that were actually pruned that way and not left with with the majority of their healthy fronds were, were more damaged we're from more the storm damaged. so then fngla changed their recommendation on how to on how to prune the trees so um that's so some of these fronds are literally touching the ground so maybe i'll give I you the think address maybe it was a yeah. cut and, F and one so two three got left down to touch okay and then they came back that next and we can week we can and always touch them, them up. up okay yeah, the, the, right. com I think the company we used to do that yeah, they're, they're pretty loyal to us so if we know there's an issue we'll get them back out and we'll take okay. care of what we can take great. care of. That, yep. that sounds great. Even if it's today, we'll get a pole saw. I think that would done. be great. Absolutely. The hibiscus okay. tree trimming, was that done at the same time as the palm trees, or was that done no. with so a full different. prune or selective prune, or when was that done? That, and then the stakes that you... Hibiscus are one of those things. So pe people stayed in town a lot longer this year. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, You guys actually have a... You retain most residents mm -hmm. in this community. Um, we typically do our hard cutbacks a little bit later like after easter when typically people go back and it, it and you know the growth has been crazy because we fertilize but hibiscus trees they are going to get all hard cutbacks on them starting next month on the next prune cycle as as stated in the calendar we will start a hard cutback in september on the street whatever street we're on we will be severely reducing the the hibiscus because that's what's needed for them for proper growth uh Hibiscus are one of those trees that are supposed to be a bush, but they are a tree, so they have very shallow rooted systems, and they do blow over all the time. And the timbers that you put in them, they, they break as well. And that's just it's something that's industry standard. It is a billable item to put, to put tree stakes in. Um, yeah, because uh, Billy, I, I think, did, I a, did a bunch. Over, I, I go down the block, there's 300 hibiscus trees on a block, and more than half of them are leaning. And, and the twenty dollars, yeah. and then I did one for cost. somebody. I yeah. do one for some, and now it's like, oh, I'll fix all the hibiscus trees, and, and we we just can't do that. So I, I, I you know, for twenty two dollars, I will come out there and I will stake it up for you again. Mm -hmm. Our committee had um, the communication committee put out a bulletin just recently. They did a really nice job of it, and it explained that the hibiscus are bushes with the bush rut. They're top heavy and most of them are older and have fallen over and the lodgepole braces have rotted off because it was put in by the original builders. Mm -hmm. So we did put that bulletin out to all the homeowners that for this fee, they wanted to charge a higher fee. I negotiated, Billy gave me a better price and that's what we published and put out just this last month. So it, it is out there for the residents. Okay. What was the date of that one? Uh, the 18th. Okay of August, so two days ago. Okay. I remember the This is still the same email as the palm leaning trees. The tree back up. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> and I think it'd be worth taking a look at that. Hibiscus yeah. being Absolutely. top heavy. 
I understand that. And when you stake up, if one has fallen with, with shallow roots, it is common practice to cut back. Hibiscus, Jatropha, there's a lot of plants we do that with. You would reduce it when you stake it. Um, so so let's it's, see if that got taken care of, and if not, correct. let's take yep. care of that. Okay, you good. Um, the next item is driveways on Greendale and Woodburn um, are full of weeds. I, I'm not sure on your schedule. They're there now. They're there now for the weeds. Yes. Yep. Okay. That was, that was what I was mentioning is in the and cycle. And when was the last time the weeds were taken care of there? Four weeks. It was after last period, so it was like four weeks ago. So July, it was that first week in July. So it was June, 30, June 30th and July 1st. Okay. How so many actually July 1st and 2nd. are you guys doing uh, for fertilization? How often do you guys, are you treating? I'll have to refer to the contract. So, so the, the, the pest control or the fertilization? Either or. I'm so we have, a, we have a schedule for here of when all that's done and what we do. Exactly. We, could, we could publish that the way this is being published, right? I'm pretty yes, sure this. It's on the so website. what we could do is publish that as well. So okay. the F&P program, when the fertilization's done, granular, very helpful. spray. I think just Absolutely. so That'd that everyone's aware of what's in yeah. the contract. What's, for sure, yeah. Um, at mm -hmm. least that section. Uh, and we did do, admittedly, and we said this in the last meeting, we had just finished a really heavy round of shrub fertilization in the, in the community, and we did a nice round of, of turf fertilization. So we did get an enormous boost in growth in, growth. in the plants, which um, the, doesn't discriminate against weeds. So mm -hmm. the weeds are very healthy. To say okay. The least. So when you say that they're, they're now doing the weeds the dry, on the driveway, is it the application of the... The chemicals they're doing weeds in the whole the whole uh -huh. process which is but are they are they spraying as well as pulling yes, yes. Okay. in the driveways we yeah. typically don't pull them oh, okay because you need so you want to get the because there's an yeah. expectation that you're pulling all weeds well when they well, when they're there trimming and they're that you should be hand pulling as well so the, correct what's in the mm -hmm. beds um but as far as yeah driveways just don't let if you've Between let it go pavers. so long then yes you're going to have to hand pull some yeah for yeah, so appearance. I, was, I was trying to get rid of them like if I have the guys weed them I mean I can make it look good and weed them out but it doesn't solve the problem no let it get to the it's, root system it's, right it's, no, no no that's, that's right. fine yeah that, that's where I was going with it. let's let's spray yeah, it let's spray. get it down to the root system which is what they're doing today mm -hmm. Monday they mow Greendale Woodburn they can easily whack them down after they've had four or five days for the that, chemical okay. to Sounds sit like in. a good plan. Okay. But so the comment on the pulling, I mean when I when I when I was driving that today there was piles in everybody's front yard of mm -hmm. weeds good that they have been pulled already today. They know you're coming. Um, <laughs> let's see. Okay, so then weeds are growing inside our bushes, uh, many higher than the bushes. I have seen that as well, and that would be where that needs to be pulled from the root out immediately while you're trimming. Um, otherwise, it's going to keep beating the bush. So what's your feedback on that? Well, that's another that's selective so herbicide that we have, too, that we're spraying. That's uh, We touched on it a little bit, but we're, we've, done, we've done probably close to almost three applications i would say of the oh. of the fusillade at this yeah. point yeah. so well, everything's repeat applications when it comes to selective herbicides because you can't have a chemical that's too strong obviously it's going to kill the plants or stress the plants out as well so you know there there are return there are return uh, applications that need to be done or hand pull them so we have been spraying the chemicals and there's another granular that we started using Last month we had talked about it in the town hall. It's a granular that we're putting down in the bushes as well. Mm -hmm. So with the topical that we're doing, the granular and the hand pulling, and then the Roundup, we're going to be in a good place soon. But you know, there is a lot of germination inside the plants, specifically on. Um, Was that Woodburn too? Greendale Woodburn, yeah. Um, yes. That, that, yeah. Okay. So, so that, that yes. makes sense because there, there's one. So there's Corner. there was actually two varieties of weeds in there, which which weren't the same varieties we were having pressure on before. That seemed to be. Um, really healthy to say the least so they are pulling them right now mm -hmm. so we'll just uh, we should check and make sure okay. that that weed with that exactly. selective herbicide because it seems to have effective. done a nice job controlling the grassy weeds that we were really struggling with in there um, but there's a couple particular weed types that that seem to be growing well still so we'll, we'll double check that yeah, and that was my hope with the granular but it could just be a real stubborn one like tom's saying so we'll, we'll get it out there for okay. you okay um why is it still you? the same oh. okay yes okay why does your crew leave Woodburn for lunch before they have finished blowing the grass off the driveways and walkways? They are almost done, just another 10 minutes, but they leave and don't come back for an hour or so. Um, this was Kathy Chaplin um, and yes, Greendale Woodburn. We can just address that with them. That's a valid complaint. We'll address that with them. 
that, that does happen. It tends to happen more in the summer. Um, people, people tend to be watching their watch to take that, that little lunch break. So, Is it a we, normal hard stop at noon it, or a hard stop at 11.45 it, or something for they, lunch exactly. or the break? We don't mandate that no. as a company, oh, yeah. but they are used to stopping at noon and taking their lunch. Yeah. We, we stress, hey, why don't you finish a project your part way through? It's a common complaint in the industry to get, hey, if you're, if you're trimming and edging and mowing and leaving a bunch of stuff in my driveway and then they open their garage, pull their car in, they, they've got a little bit of a mess. So we'll remind them to at least blow, even if they're not done, at least blow off the driveways and walkways. Before they Absolutely. And you have to forgive me too, sometimes like the other day, okay, I've been, I've been working very close with these guys, retraining and making sure these things are getting looked at. There was a time when they were on a road and they completed a road and, and I did my inspection and I didn't like it. And you know, I was like, you know what, just get in the truck and come back. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna do it all, and we're gonna do it again. So that might have left, you know, that left, they left that street because I don't want to keep going farther. I bring them back, I show them, and we do it right the first time so that we don't have to have these um, issues that, oh, it didn't get weeded right, oh, it didn't get edged right. I, I want to deal with it right then and there, and I want to take the guys physically there and show them, hey, this is not acceptable. This is the way we got to do it. So there is, I've been working with the crew. So there is times when I pick them up and move them back to do it right, and then we'll go back. So it may not so, have been lunch. I mean, yeah. it's, it's yeah. it might have yeah. been that. That's a good point. And I commend Billy so much for that. That's, that's what we were pleading for mm -hmm. the whole time. And Billy came in, and he, this is exactly what's needed. It, just kudos, Billy. You're just... Doing a really great job. I just job. don't want to pass it up and, oh, we'll deal with That's it later. That's the way to do it. I, I'm going to deal That's with it right now. That's the way to do it. And we're going to take care of it right now. And he's instilling pride in work. Meeting, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Huh? The passing it up and not doing what he's doing is why we had the last meeting we mm -hmm. had. So um, I think the new approach is working on the quality side for sure. You're doing okay. good, Bill. Okay. All right. This is uh, Barrio, and this is from Phyllis Elliott. Enclosed are a number of photos of bare spots, dollar weeds, uh, mushrooms growing in my yard. I have put in work orders uh, multiple times and these problems have not been resolved. I have had an irrigation come in and check my sprinkler system. Everything checked out fine. Therefore, I'm asking the GM and the board to address this uh, problem with down to earth. Um, so fungus in the grass, I mean, that should be, how often yeah. were you treating? So and you're actually on the calendar, um, it was for this week, IPM turf, if you, if you look at the August calendar. So when was the last time it got treated? It, I mean, we had two, we're, we have somebody in here multiple days a week, and it's, and it's not specifically just treat, we do IPM, integrated pest management. So we don't go around and do, let's, let's call it a blanket application on everything. We treat items as needed. So and these, that, like, say she's had these mushrooms in her yard for a while. Or well, mushroom, mushroom, mushrooms, during, it kind of depends on the mushroom. So we, we should probably go take a look at it. If yeah. there's okay. big mushrooms growing in a circle pattern in your yard, that is specific. That's called fairy ring. That's, that's a fungal disease that will actually damage the turf. There's tons of germination of mushrooms this time of year randomly in people's yards mm -hmm. that are not damaging to turf grass the whatsoever. turf is very damaged yeah okay. so it looks like you, it has a fungus yeah so it might yeah, have fairy ring that we that's something that he like he was our integrated pest management program we do have notes in this place of where we've had certain pressures um if that's something that we find to be that and we treat it that would be noted for next year because that's something we would treat systemically so what's year. your process or your plan moving forward to where somebody's eyeballing these items um, and noting, you know, that, that they're treating for this type of, uh, before the grass turf does get damaged even further. Yeah, we do full inspections. And so who, who does, outside uh, of Billy, how often do you walk, or is it somebody else? Between, yeah, so we have, we have a pest technician on site that's dedicated to Sandoval for X, X hours a week, and um, she's very experienced, and she does go through the entire property. So along, along, with, along with her eyes, we have Billy, and then we have the mowing crew too. So they're obviously going through all the turf, and and seeing things. And they text Billy. I mean, tell me if I'm if they haven't no, been, but they they typically correct. do. And especially mm -hmm. like what what Tom was talking about, fairy rings. It, there's meeting. We have tailgate meetings every other week at the at the shop with the with the entire crews. It's been a little different because of you know our current situation. So we've been doing small meetings with our with our crews now, 
And um, that's one of the ones that come up this time of year because of all the rain is you see a brown patch, you see a series of, of mushrooms, you know, there's going to be fungus, you mow around it, let, let your account manager know, and then we get the pest technician to take care of it. Because so, that can be well, transported so absolutely. on the mower. Right. So my question would be is, what's your plan to treat it and how long should she expect to see a difference? We could treat, well, our plan was to be there this week and take care of it. So it might have to be a follow, and you're actually, you're scheduled for this week and next week. So you shoot me that address and we'll get that taken care of. And in a situation like that, if it is something that's, to see the that's yeah, we have to see the damage. We might have to go down, do a few homes, and blanket applicate the, uh, apply it in a blanket format on that street. So shoot me that address. Well, I'll take mm -hmm. a look at it. We're gonna have to look at the damage to tell you how long it will take to recover if it's yeah. that, if it's a large area. It'd be weird for a ferry ring to take out a whole area like that. But we'll just look mm -hmm. at it and individually treat it. But in in the grand scheme of things, the process is the account manager and his mm -hmm. team so you have multiple you got crew leads like he was mentioning on the mower crew mm -hmm. the crew leads are constantly trained mm -hmm. and these meetings that we talk about are pictures of these issues seasonally that we deal with and if you see that you let the account manager know and they're in direct communication with your pest your pest control technicians all the time okay so she she's in here spot treating stuff all the time yes. those applications yeah. for the mites the, the when, when we had chinch bug pressure when it was mm -hmm. dry in the spring um, that that is their full-time job. That's all okay. they're doing is treating. And if you've these. neglected something, would it be something where you throw down a few cover. pieces yeah. of, and correct that? Okay. Yeah. Um, so we'll get you that address. Um, that was it. We only have a few more. Um, Time-wise, are we okay? Yeah, we're or? good. We're okay. Good. Uh, let's see. This one, um, Barbara Barrio. Several weeks ago, I spoke with Billy Ditzel about my concerns. It appears that my shrubbery was sprayed with a deadly poison that seems to have been uh, systemic. I have pictures from then and more from today. It was a very destructive event. The fact that the bushes are dying is one thing. The other thing is that it's very disturbing uh, to the environmental issues. I have milkweed plants here for the monarch butterfly caterpillars. This is the host plant. There had been at least 16 caterpillars active on two plants, and then poof, all gone. I am sure there was nothing intentional done, but the hired help have no knowledge of what they are doing. They just spray anything. I'm enclosing photos and request not to spray anything on my property. And they're pretty burnt up uh, plants here. What was that address again? Are you going to send us right. yeah. afterwards? So yeah, I'm going to go. forward mm -hmm. all yeah, yeah. of these. Okay. Um, so, so first of all, and I think it's important for the community to know this, that's why we practice integrated pest management. We are not blanket applicating uh, uh, hurtful chemicals or whatever people want to call them. Our, our program is designed to treat things when they need to be treated and then prevent them the next year. So like I was saying, if an area has fairy ring or brown patch in the winter months, the, our systemics that we purchase and buy, that's what they're for. So, so as, as Billy gets more and more settled in here, these are the types of things that he's gonna say. I had pressure at that house for fungus. That one house will probably get systemic treatment for fungicide, not the entire neighborhood. I and, don't know if we're talking about the same thing. So they, they well, that's on a plant. put a chemical, so it's a, it's, on, they put a chemical and killed plants. Right. So, but but she was talking about all the the, the deadly chemicals and things like that. So no, I don't know. no. She was saying that these specific these plants that they're killed, and now all of the caterpillars and whatever um, the butterflies the, died. The milk. Yeah, you so could. She was saying we'll go look at that. Yeah, one house, the ferns but. were burnt up. The abricolos. I mean, they're all burnt up, like burnt up. So, like, a, she's saying that somebody put something on the plants and killed them. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's. That's interesting. We'll have to take a look at it because I'm not sure of what chemical we have. So again, we in this situation, once you go and take a look, we'll that take a look. Exactly. Obviously, if it's something that was in air, um, you know that, that you guys would uh, potentially I replace of course. something. Right. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's what I'm looking for, some feedback yeah. of, you're going to take a look at it, you'll take care of that, and then maybe some retraining as far as chemicals go, what not to put on the plants, right. um, things like that, as what I'll note. A point that's that from was three raised, weeks though, ago. was um, uh, Tuesday. Tuesday, but oh, the when they actually kill was... happened, it was like four or five weeks ago. Five no, or five. I remember. The... Oh, sorry, several weeks. So a couple weeks this ago. When it first started, it was um, already. 
So if we can, we'll get this to you, but I, I think that just. I'd like to address that one today, yeah. yeah. Right. Check it out. Yeah. Absolutely. What's that, Kathy? Did she have a question? AJ, she doesn't want spraying in the future. If you guys do replace stuff and you right. see so how do I think that I'm aware of how Maybe if they that, communicate so. with her what happened okay. moving forward, what okay. they can do. Do you maintain a list of those residents that, in this instance, with the milkweed plants for the butterflies, if she didn't want you applying chemicals, do you keep a list? How specific? Absolutely. I have a, a, a no trim list and a, and a no spray list. Okay. At least from what I know, when I get the, right. get it from the res, there was right. not one provided. For Would they send me. that I'm in through the um, the work go. order process? Now, is that is that approved? So our homeowners, as through the approval process for designs in their yard, certain is that part of the process here in Sandoval that they can get that approved? It put? seems like that's what's been taking place. But as far as they're still involved in that contract, right. nothing changes. Um, if it came to a place where they chose to take that on themselves and then the grass started to have weeds or something like that and you have it on the list we can send a letter a friendly reminder letter um and encourage them that way we have other ways that we keep an eye on somebody being in compliance with their landscape so okay. if but if in this instance she was concerned about the milkweed plants and her caterpillars and her butterflies so in the future she doesn't want application of sprays on those she doesn't specific want pesticides. I, yeah. It well, potentially, if you go and talk, I, I, yeah, I, I think, think maybe you could fix it. what happened, explain what happened, and yeah. maybe regain some trust there, hopefully, yeah. and see, you know, maybe there was an error. It looks like it, clearly, and, and find out what, from your crew what happened. Just communicate that and then work to resolve it. Maybe she doesn't want to come off the list, but if she does want to, um, just make sure you add her on the no spray list. You got it. Okay. If homeowners are adding butterfly plants instead of the approved shrubs, I think is what Tom was getting at. That's all, I just didn't know. Uh, these are the, butterfly any... plants. Like mm -hmm. we have a butterfly garden in town. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Calypso. we get a lot of emails. Is anybody going to clean out these weeds and kill these <laughs> weeds? So basically, the majority of butterfly plants that people plant, like milkweed, is from coming from farming is a noxious weed. You get rid of it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because it's competing against your crop. Sure. Um, so in the same thing, in our approved plant list, I'm, I'm guessing that we're not going to see a lot of things people are choosing to be butterfly plants mm -hmm. that we need to address and add into it, but maybe needs to be marked for somebody who's typically trained to spray shrubs mm -hmm. and they're seeing this weed and they're mm -hmm. like oh my gosh this weed is bigger than the shrubs I got to get rid of it mm -hmm. they don't realize it's a treasured weed for a certain breed of butterfly sure so it I can see where this is a collision course mm -hmm. between the two yeah and if, um, it, if it is a thing we, we just gotta we just gotta make sure that this particular text are in here are trained for that because there are right. there are sp specific to butterflies there are other insect pressures that we get on a lot of plant varieties mm -hmm. in here that the insecticide that's used to control those those outbreaks of the insects would do damage to the to the to the butterflies. So, yeah. so that's, you guys we'll, can we'll take a look yep. and, and um, address that. Yep. It, they it. do sell really nice little you know wire stands with a little card with a picture of a butterfly on it. You know, if the homeowner wants to do something like that, if they would just do something like that, so it like catches the text eye, like, oh, okay, don't spray that. It's it's not really a weed it is a weed mm -hmm. but it's not really a weed right, to this, this person purpose, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I think that would help yeah so maybe when you talk to her see if she wants to put yep. something there and we'll send uh, you an update of the list that we currently have as well so you Great. Guys yeah. have okay. it um, let's see um, this is the one um, Darren down to earth I'm in favor of getting rid of their maintenance calendar the perimeter of Hope Field was supposed to start August the 10th, and here we are on August the 18th and nothing. I understand about the Florida weather and human factors, so I don't like the calendar. That's the, what the weekly update's for. So yeah, valid, valid, valid complaint and concern. It's just, I think, I think in the grand scheme of things, communicating a schedule, trying to, and then communicating where you're at with the schedule um, and then in instances like this, I can see where it, it gives people, they're expecting something to happen and doesn't. We'll just make sure that we continue to communicate that once a week, that where we're at in comparison to that so they know. 
Mm -hmm. um, so he would have known that that was going to be a week off. Okay. All right. So then we need to possibly communicate that to the residents because it comes in into the GM thinking, and to Allison. Communications is going to be asked to do more. I think that's a going back and changing and. If you guys sent just a simple that. like, dear, you know, Vero Street. We didn't. We weren't able to get to you today, but we're coming on this date, you know, or communicate that. Just very mm -hmm. simple. Sending a, you know, a, a long a schedule, and then it's you're not going off that schedule. So just if you miss something, communicate, and then so Allison. simplify the communication a little bit. I, I mean, if you hit everything on that schedule and you're saying you just missed a couple streets, then just communicate to those couple streets through our communications. Okay, you can do that. Um, try it out through. Uh, Allison and Denise, the communications team. Do you think that's it? Are you sending it now on Fridays? Yeah. Or what day of the week are you sending it? Is it consistent Thir weekly? It'll be Thursdays. But the Thursdays. Last week we, we didn't send one because it was just communication. But mm -hmm. um, we'll get you another update this week on where we're at. So another thing I can do is halfway through the month, just send an updated, a whole updated. It doesn't take me long to just shift the oh, yeah, blocks that'd be down. Mm -hmm. You know, if you guys wanted, if you because wanted to do Because we have people way. looking online now at the calendar, which is good. Yeah, okay. That's good. That's, <laughs> yeah, so that's I'll, I'll do that then. That's, that's a good, you that'll, know. Be, that'll be really and, and I'll make a note on the side that, you know, okay. updated, updated, you know, August 26th or whatever it may be, or 15th, obviously, because it's going to be the beginning of the month, not the end. So. Okay. That'll be helpful. Okay. All righty. If only have... Fifty more. No, I'm just <laughs> A few more. Uh, my You're name is. You're very popular. My name is Vladimir. Um, living off of Lavaca uh -huh. Court. Uh, this morning, the down-to-earth worker was mowing the grass and left a big mess in my backyard by the palm tree. I had replaced sod myself, and every time they mowed, the circle without grass getting uh, the grass is getting larger and larger. So it's a, a rut from the mowing. Um, my second question is, how often do you do weed control? So I, I will, uh, you, again, I'll forward you these pictures, but it's, it's, it's really bad. Um, both the weeds and the ruts in the grass. Weeds in the turf? Uh, the weeds are not, some weeds in the turf okay. and then in the mulch beds. Grass growing in the mulch beds, weeds. Yeah, so they're on, they're on Lavaca. Lavaca. I saw them today on Lavaca Casaberry. Um, this doing came the, in this morning, so yeah. Yeah, so, so they're morning. doing the, the pruning over there as well. And you know, as we said before, the the roundup, the weed control is going after the pruning crew, just you know, for a regular process. So the weeds will all get taken care of. And to answer uh, the amount of times it gets done is once a month is when it should should be getting done. So. And that's for turf weeks. and in the mulch in the beds. Turf weeds, no. How turf often weeds are, are you? As, turf weeds are as needed. Okay. Yeah. So. When we see those, we treat them. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's the IPM weeds. process. And when Matt was here, we talked about changing up the mowing pattern for those areas that are getting ruts, and so that when he had three different mower sizes, yes, he was kind of changing that up every once in a while, okay. so that okay. it's not the same size mm -hmm. mower in the same track in that size yard and that helped a lot yeah well, as well, I know. Got that. Okay. okay so talk to the crew and get them in different directions and not tearing it up yes. and then the weeds will be taken care of today mm -hmm. is that well no they're no. so they're finishing up a this, month they're finishing up they're greenwood pruning. greendale woodburn oh, pruning. Okay. and then so that was the last selective that we did so now this is a full prune on lavaca they're going to jump and follow Lavaca for the Lavaca and Cassaberry for the weeds. Okay. Yes. Okay, so they're coming behind them. Um, turf weeds. Turf weeds. Turf weeds will just be done. On as the, I'll throw it on. I'll, I'll put it on the schedule. Yeah. yeah as no, needed. We'll, we'll, we'll have you, her go treat those. Okay. That's, that's, that's you, separate from you, the weeding the beds. Yeah, and you're you're on the, the schedule once again. IPM turf is for this week and next week, but the reality is it's going to be next week and the following week for where they're treating turf. For no matter for whatever it, it is needed, um, fungus, weeds, you know, uh, insects, whatever is needed. So that's that's on for two weeks, and it's starting next week because we're behind schedule. 
Okay. So, and what that means is when that when you see that on the schedule, just to kind of explain it a little bit, when you see IPM turf, what that means is she's going to be out here inspecting all of the turf mm -hmm. outside of what the account manager and the crews are saying and doing and seeing or a resident pointing out in their yard. And as she's seeing that, she's gonna treat them depending upon what they are. If it's nuts edge because of water, it's a different chemical. If it's dollar weed, it's a different chemical. Mm -hmm. So she's mm -hmm. going to be individually selectively treating for the next two weeks in here, all turf grass areas for weeds. That's, okay. what, that, that's what that means. Okay, is it a colored treatment? Do you notice it or no? We, we don't, don't color it. it. No, okay. it's not dyed. Okay, just curious. Um, let's see. You will this see a lawn stake. Okay. In the turf. Okay. So if if chemical has been treated. applied, yeah, there'll be a lawn stake every fourth, fifth house or so. Okay. Um, or where it's been spot treated. This is Vario. Um, do you put weed killer on lawn? If you do, when and how often? I think Let's you want to so reiterate the same thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So in the course of two weeks, you cover all the 600 plus homes with the lawn. Is that? Correct. Yeah. So we'll, we'll mix, we'll have different tanks. So we'll mix, if we need to do insecticide, fungicide, we'll take care of that. And then we might, this time of year, you do you can do a backpack application of herbicides. For how the, often uh, a month are eyes being, outside of the regular crew, but the specific, how often is a yard being seen? Oh, every month. Yeah. Once a month? Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. continuous Once or twice month. a month. I mean, the 90% of the, the technician that's in here, it, their time is just Sandoval. They right, don't. but if she's going through all the homes, what does that time look like? What is, you know, my home's being, you know, looked at every two weeks or or once a month. Yeah. Uh, it, it to, to, to how I've done it in the past is every other month is how I've done maintenance. But in here, it's, I would, I would say it's probably monthly. Okay. So yeah. once a month, somebody is visually walking and looking at the turf outside of the regular crew. Is that correct? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's the pest, absolutely pest correct. technician. Yeah. Okay. Well, correct. Billy and oh, okay. pest technician, yes. yeah. Sure, and as a, if you see something going on, you communicate that Correct. as well. Uh, when is mulch put down? Do you guys do the mulch? Is we that do. in the contract just, or is that separate it, additional? Is it in the fall? Is it in the fall of October? Yeah, we haven't, yeah. I haven't it's seen a fall application fall it is included application in, our, in our contract. Thank you. Okay. I believe I well I we'll check October. the schedule, but I believe it's October that they're scheduled. I think it was. Okay. Yeah. okay. They're on the schedule every year to do in here. Same vendor. Okay. Uh, do you fertilize plants? When and how often? We're going to submit a schedule. Okay. So that they can see that. We just learned in the past month, Down to Earth is responsible to trim bushes along fence line on the side of our home. Then we learned this. Uh, we were told it would be done this week and we are still waiting. The bushes are very overgrown. And I do have a picture attached of the, um, of the bushes being overgrown. We have been in our home three years and they have never trimmed. Also, how often can we expect these bushes to be trimmed? Then could they please fertilize and could mulch be put down to make it look finished since it is part of the community? What yeah, so is that? mulch will be Vario. applied during the mulch application, mm -hmm. which is, will give you the exact date when it's going to start. It should be sometime in October. Um, to answer the frequency of pruning moving forward, it will be pruned when the homes are pruned. Um, and as of right now, the pruning, it's because we're behind in the schedule. So the perimeter, perimeter hedges that would have fallen in that category to have been done this week, but, but the, whether that, delays. That, the, the, they mentioned their house too. Were, that, were those questions specific to the house? Were you, how long have you guys been doing landscape in Sandoval? It's been a year and yeah. a, a year and a few, few a year months. Last March. March, right? Yeah. March, okay. March. 19. So yeah. this was back um, along the fence line, bushes. Yeah, that's um, the real Which is new to the fence open. line that's is new, new. to there's a section of the fence that's line new. that's okay. that we do do now, but it, we weren't doing it when we took on the contract. Okay. Correct. That that's okay. just this spring was was changed. Okay. Yeah. So they just learned that you're responsible, so they're asking when will those bushes be trimmed. Okay, so those they will see that on the upcoming calendar. So right now that was gonna start this week. Yeah. It's gonna start next next week and hopefully we'll actually might even get on and start it tomorrow too. Um, but going forward, it will be done when her ho when the home's done. Her or he, I'm not okay. sure which it was. So it'll be. And that kept. Both, it's, both it's pretty vague on the calendar. It just says perimeter trimming. So we're going we're going to start from 
Hope. Hope, Hope, Hope Field, and then we're going to do all the perimeter street stuff moving north. So it, it might they might not get to, so to that area until the be end a of the week. Just keep yeah. that in mind. <laughs> and then yeah. um, from Ed and Kathy uh, Stengel to add, uh, could they please fertilize? What, at our next, well, fer uh, in October. <laughs> October. Yeah. There's a fertilizer. You can't fertilize in the summer. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's yeah. That's important to note, right? June through. Yeah. Right, um, but people just moving in sensitive? maybe don't realize mm -hmm. that. Correct. Yeah. So there's a blackout right now that, yes. that, that yes. we can't fertilize. Yeah. So we can't right. fertilize in the summer months, but that's why we schedule fertilization the way that we do. So right coming out of the blackout period in the summer, we start fertilizing in the community right away. So we, prior we to that ahead. being sensitive uh, time period, how often should fertilization be done? Granular fertil fertilizations granular. are I, typically I done granular. three times a year. Okay. Like we just finished the last one in May right before the blackout began in mm -hmm. June. And then we would hit okay. one in October and then middle of the winter. So it's typically January, February okay. are the three granular applications. And then we supplement that with, with fertilizations and minor nutrients through liquid. Great. Very good. Okay. Excellent. Um, let's see. Uh, Peter Krauski. The lower my this is on Greendale. Greendale. The lower my thoughts on down to earth. If you would please read the following at the meeting, thank you. My concerns noted below are not new. I have previously emailed both the Sandoval Board of Directors and the previous GM about these issues first in January 2020 and again in May 2020. As far as I'm concerned, down to earth has not improved. I want to stress that the workers are hard workers. Either down to earth management does not provide them with adequate training or they are not given enough time to <coughs> properly do their job. I note the following. And maybe um, I'll pause after each. Mowing is adequate as is hard edging. Soft trimming is done too fast and sloppy allowing turf to grow into the beds. All bed lines should be aligned and cleaned up extensively and regularly. Um, so the sloppy speed racer going on, how do you guys want to address that one? Okay, I already, I, I get with my guys and I explain to them, this is not a race to slow down and have pride in your work and, and be more visual. With the edging, it, it is a, on the beds, it, it is bi-weekly that we're doing this, and um, I'm getting my guys to, when it comes to the edging, some of the edging has get, gotten too wide, where they're, they're to stop edging so we can shrink, get the grass to grow better into the edge. Um, I, I mean, I don't know. I think, what, what was the, did you have a, uh, an address on that one? Greendale, please. Just, mm -hmm. just Greendale, okay. I do so, have the address, but if you'd like it later. I'll yeah, okay, great. So I think what we've done from the last meeting to now, because that was a similar complaint, I think it was almost the exact same complaint then, is that we, we actually are, we took the crews, we improved the crews, and we're training the crews, continuously training them. I mean, like, like Billy was saying earlier, he, we don't just let people keep going. If we find something on the street or even if AJ and I are, are driving the property, checking on the, where they're at, if we find an issue, they're being retrained at that moment in time. We've changed the mowers, added mowers. Um, we're, they're not being told to go fast and get done 25 homes or whatever it may be that would cause an issue like that. So, um, and, some, and some homes, like Billy said, we're, we are trying to shrink some of the beds to and that, get a more that, consistent look. That might be what. And that, and that could be it. Yeah, yeah the, if, if they had a bed that grew out considerably from all the years of edging, we've, we've started to let those grow back in. That could be why it's looking like we didn't soft edge. I don't, oh, that's yeah. why I was asking which address it is so we go yeah. look. Because yeah, that no, was a big complaint last time is that we over edged. Okay, cool. I do expect you to go take care <clears> of Okay, good. Okay. Yeah, this so is it, not just for talk conversational pieces. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, okay, so that. Um, you're going to go take a look at that. You're communicating with your crew, um, and then supervision, the same. Uh, I mean, this was just turned in um, on the 19th, so okay. uh, maybe readdress what you're doing there. Uh, number two, the Sandoval contract with Down to Earth is poorly written and does not specify frequency of shrub trimming or performance standards. Um, 
I don't know that that's anything that we can address. Well, we are with the this. calendar. That's okay. why we're submitting a calendar okay. now because they are going to see exactly how many times they're trimmed and, and sprayed and all of those things are gonna be communicated to them all the time. This okay. is maybe a good time to ask how many times a year they plan to trim each home because that's been a big question. You know, people are asking all the time, are they gonna trim my bushes eight times a year like other companies did in the past? Mm. Times, yeah. That's a very common question. Yeah, it says plants in Florida grow 12 to inches to 16 yeah. inches okay. annually. Trimming three inches off twice per year only allows plants to grow out of control. So mathematically, what they're saying is, and especially when you're saying that you're putting an elaborate amount of fertilization, um, that if you're just trimming a, a minimum but pre to the new calendar and the selective prune the answer would be different but the, the plan is now that each home is being touched and pruned 12 times a year okay. it, but we're not going to come in and hack every plant in the yard 12 times a year mm -hmm. um, and, and there's going it, with the new process of how we're doing it it's just going to improve and get better and better because with the the, the types of pre-emergence the types of fertilization and <clears> the way that we're selectively pruning Things should start to bloom when they're supposed to bloom, get cut when they're, whereas before, it was a full trim. It didn't matter what was blooming and what wasn't, we were just gonna trim the entire house because that was your trim cycle. Your home was gonna get done and everything on that home was gonna get done. The, the purpose of the selective prune is by the time we get to it on the full trim, some things may not need to be because they're in bloom and everything else will get trimmed. So it's, I guess the right answer would be the houses, homes are gonna be touched pruning 12 times a year. Okay. So that's going to be really encouraging mm -hmm. for homeowners that that have DTE um, because if they're thinking it's like only twice per year in the past, now it's going to be six times a year full trim, six times a year touch up. Selected. So, Select. Right. Or touch up. Yeah. So it's um, basically monthly, which should make everyone relieved, I would think, mm -hmm. to, to learn that data. So thank you for, yeah. for yeah, sharing that. I agree. That. Okay. And again, in the winter months, it's like, this sure. piece of cake might even be more. So, <laughs> um, The so-called uh, DTE selective pruning was done on Greendale uh, several weeks ago. Some plants, such as grasses, were trimmed only where they overhang onto the sidewalks. Others were ignored completely. Many homes have windows, mostly covered up with shrub overgrowth and are out of control regarding the height and closeness to our homes. See pictures, which we have pictures attached, I'll send. Um, so this new, um, I guess, what? Um, Method. The so type some of, of, some of what was said, so there's, there's an application being done. Oh, selective pruning. Right, so there's using. an application on the grasses specifically that's being done to control the mites and cutting them back. So, but the selective prune would be one of the things that we t they're trained to do when they go to a home to select the prune it, is things that are overhanging driveways and walkways. That's who's like who's deciding the selective pruning again? Is well, the the street. The three of us. Did. Right. But who who's the, so the crew decides yes or no? I'm going to trim that today. Billy's driving. Yeah. It. Uh, yeah we, okay. we we walked through and we showed okay. it and yes. we all walked through as well and, and we said this is what you're hitting, walkways, garages, you know. Just as long as the crew's like. It looks good to me. I'm moving on. So he's no. he's doing a good job. I mean, I'll walk with anybody. That's great. That's saying he's not. He's 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 hitting it. and He's doing what the selective you, pruning is supposed to supposed to do. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm sure it's a it's a hard task keeping everyone in line. There so. also there are some though. I mean, admittedly, again, the selective prune. This is the first two months doing it. We're one week behind on it. I I did on Greendale right now. There is a bougainvillea that needs to be selectively pruned. It's got two water shoots coming out, they're seven feet tall. Yeah. I mean, they just, and that's what those water shoots do, they shoot up. That's one that we had to come mm -hmm. back and retouch. And, and, so maybe and Billy's note says four homes to go on Greendale. So it's yes. probably, it's oh, probably. So we've got four so, more homes. And, and I, think mm -hmm. that it, I think that would give some hope is saying that, you know, we are still learning in the selective pruning mm -hmm. that maybe we didn't get everything we should have yep. pruned. Yep. I think that's True. what we need to hear. This is new and what we're doing and maybe we didn't catch everything that we should have mm -hmm. um, is what it maybe you, sounds like throughout these uh, the walkways agreed. trying to get through the houses you those should it. be things that common sense cut them back a little bit yep. so okay so we're working on that and I think it will help with the weekly updates yeah so, so we'll include stuff like that like hey we're gonna be on the street but hey we're four houses left to select the prune on that street and they'll right. get that communication weekly okay you um, have an update by the end of today okay great 
Um, we do most of our weeding and some pruning to make our property look acceptable. In addition, I do fill out work orders to DTE. However, there is a direct correlation between how much one complains and the service provided by DTE. On most homes of snowbirds, the shrubs are overgrown and weeds are growing in the beds, paver, walkways, and drivers, uh, drives. Our street does not have a uniform, well landscaped look. Residents should not be expected to have to write a work order or send an email to have a good landscaping practice followed. DTE supervisors should be inspecting the properties and making any corrections, not the customers. We pay DTE a significant $115.50 monthly and the service is substandard. Hopefully some positive actions will uh, result. We're, we're <clears throat> I'm sorry that they, 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 they haven't felt that that's gotten better, but I th that's the purpose of this and, and hopefully it will. And, and we'll take that work order and we'll go address specifically what they're talking about. I wanna see the paper weeds and, and things that we may have fallen behind on and, and fix it right away. And I think with, with the landscape committee and everyone yeah. else cutting back on the work orders that run through, yeah. that should not be a, a, right, a for full time work. job for someone to maintain your work orders. So not at all. We look forward to them getting communication and, and taking care of those those Correct. things. So we appreciate you coming out. And in the, um, in, in the in the the one hundred fifteen fifty again, that does include all of their mulch and their tree trimming one time a year too. Yeah. Right, it's great. It's not on top of that. Yeah. Okay, my bushes are getting so high. This is, um, I have to pull off the street. Um, they did not mention, um, so we can pull up their name and get their address, but the, the bushes are encroaching upon um, their patio there. They did trim, but took off less than three inches. We used to get several trims a year, but this is unacceptable. You are doing more trims now, correct? Yeah. We'll just have to look at that one and, and see, because it's if anything they're getting more trimming, but maybe they didn't. Maybe that was a slight trimming, three inch. Maybe, maybe they're used to it, seeing it cut more aggressively because we weren't there more often. Mm -hmm. So we may have taken more off before, whereas now it's it's touching it up and making sure it's. There. And they can get with us, and um, we could put a piece of blue masking tape at the height that they desire, and we can keep it maintained at that height. The, okay. the guys know to look for blue tape. Oh, that's good. For, for specific, excuse me, specific heights. That was because it was edges. blocking a view, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's patty. It's it's crunching in on their screen, and it's they're feeling closed <laughs> in. Um, it's getting very tall. Okay. Um, that was from Chris and Jack Clint. Let's see. This is Lambay. Patrick Dowd. Uh, question. Why have these Arabic, no, Arabica palms never been trimmed by the landscape company for the last three plus years we have lived here? I have submitted work orders. Now I am forced to bring in a company to either control them or remove them at my expense. Isn't this a part of the HOA contract? Arabica and palms they're, they're the... Um, they're not allowed in town. I don't know. Very hairy palm Arabica's. trees. on Arabica's. the. On the it, it looks like, it's a, it looks looks like, like a Rika palm. Yeah. It's Lambe, I think was the street, right, Lambe? Mm -hmm. it, it must be perimeter. A request not to plant Arika palms, and it's going to go for the board to not have Arika palms. In the future, I'm not sure why there's Arika palms in town. And I, we'll look at them. The, the, the trimming this techniques. This is over three, I mean. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I well, a lot of people they were there. My, just my plant without going trimmer. through the ARC. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> and so, maybe so they bought the home that already had that, because I know contract. a couple years back that was an issue. Do people the were putting them in and the then selling their house. I do have the address. Oh, okay, we have the address on oh, that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah we'll visit. look at it. Arica, Arica palms are what's called the clumping palm. Mm -hmm. It's not something right. that's typically trimmed. Um, you know, they, they self-defoliate as they die, and those brown fronds are picked up. You typically don't prune. And the, and the, unless they they're like up against encroach. your gutter or mm -hmm. causing a problem. I, I, my guess would be there's some type of fence line and they may be over, you know, going over the fence as well there. And, yeah, that's why um, we don't want them in town. But, I mean, if we'll they were yeah. originally, yeah. you know, planted and they're in the back, maybe you stop by and see. Mm -hmm. um, yes. I, we're going to have unique situations, so. Okay. So, yes, I agree. Those, those are, they grow really fast. <laughs> wow. 
And did we do, okay, so. And fun, funny enough, most contracts actually specifically say no. not mm -hmm. maintaining not. Eureka Palms. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. We don't want them in town anyway. Uh, Woodburn Place, uh, Glen Perry. Um, Pamela, Glen Perry. My biggest concern is that these guys cut all the grass, leave all the clippings in the driveways, sidewalks, and then they go to lunch. They come back an hour later to blow. This is another of the similar. Same old. Um, yeah. I can't see. The street again, please? Yeah. Wood this is Woodburn. This one was yeah. Woodburn. Woodburn? Right. Oh, same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is a, a separate one, though. Mm -hmm. A second one, yeah. Yeah. Um, I can't see why they can't uh, blow it off before they go to lunch. Reason being, we track all the grass inside the house and in the garage. But when it rains, it sticks and it stays on the sidewalks. When they are blowing off everything, I don't like how they blow everything into the beds that you see all the grass clippings on top of the mulch, especially when you put your own down. One more thing, don't like the clumps of grass left in the lawns. Yeah. Um, I think if they see the clumps of grass, they should go over them again, um, mulch in like the machines are supposed to be doing. I believe they are going too fast with the lawnmowers. That's why they have the clumps of grass. Thank you. We'll, we'll address that. Okay, so what are you... Um, We'll, we'll address that with the crew. Some of it's similar with the with the, clean yeah. up. Correct. We're gonna we're gonna make sure the crews know them before they go to lunch to try and blow everything off and get it cleaned up. Regarding the blowing, we'll talk with them, Billy. We'll give it to the crews. That going. Yeah. I mean, I mean some it's, of it's, it's not it avoidable. Some of it is. I mean, it depends on where really? the clippings are and when we're trying to clean up. Some yeah. of that will naturally blow into the beds, but the idea is they blow it into. I the mean, grass. literally just to and mow. Is that, to mow the clumping green? is because they're going too fast in the probably, grass, or is it because probably wet grass? Wet, wet grass. grass. Wet. Yeah, okay. but th we do, we sharpen the blades. They're, they're, we have many sets of blades at the shop, so they change them out. We have a mechanic that works at night, changes them out to try to re reduce that issue. And especially with Woodburn and Greendale being on a Monday, they're getting fresh sets of blades. So the only thing I could see it, the reason for it happening is the wet grass. And like you said, just maybe going a little bit slower okay. in those specific areas. But we'll address it with the crews and make sure it doesn't happen. And we'll, we'll try to figure out a, a game plan uh, on how to get that street blown off uh, way before lunchtime. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the only reason it gets delayed and it's not blown off okay, right you away. Have to, you have to understand, okay, uh, say Woodbourne and Green Deal. I mean, it yeah. literally takes them uh, to do that whole road, weedy edge and to mow. It almost takes five hours just yeah. to do that. The guys are... Okay, they and that's what I was going to say. You can't I mean, blow off before you edge or before you finish weeding, so you have right. to finish the full, have to finish the full that service. Task. But and then, and we'll that's, get it. That's a five-hour pro process right there, just on that one road. On that one road. But do they do one I side mean, of the street or half the street that they could finish the process to, with the trimming and the to finish finish every but then it would you slow to, them down, yeah. and, and it would Rather just, just it would going slow the progress down because then they so have guys, to do that's this something road you guys then, talk I mean, about it help them yeah. with a game plan yeah yeah you know? we'll, I mean, we'll get we'll game plan it we'll get it taken care for something it. that's yeah. fair we'll, not you know unreasonable yeah we don't want to slow down production, right. but we also don't want if there's some help to mm -hmm. hey this is the section and we're going to do it all and including the blowing before you go to the next take a break or something like that okay yep. Yep. we'll okay. circle back on that that's all the um work orders uh so far that i got this week so Casey will share the photos and the, um, the addresses yes. with y'all. If you, you can follow up, that would emails. be really helpful with the with the homeowners. I get them in the copy machine before you go even or something okay. like mm -hmm. that. That'd be good. And then um, we'll have an update. You said today, Thursday. Yep. So maybe on Friday morning, the communications committee then can send a refined update. We can work on that and get it out Fridays to the, you know, blast it out to the um, the homeowners. We could do it on the web page. We could do it on the web page. I've had some non-DTE homeowners. Like, how come we keep getting all these blasts right, that's right. on just DTE the, yeah. things? Yeah, so. and that's why we're doing the town hall, because when we did the um, down-to-earth at the board meeting, there was concern that so much time was dedicated when it doesn't impact everybody. So we figured Understood. the town hall okay. was the And we get the same forum. feedback with the e-blasts. 
Yeah. So, with, so well, what about so if for we the, just po where are we posting the where calendar? Where we post the calendar? Perfect. I think we'll just so on the Sandoval Live web page mm -hmm. landscaping. Yeah. Um, you'll see the monthly schedule. You'll see the work order. You'll see updates, and we will put in the um, the weekly status reporting, and then the mid-month updated calendar. Perfect. Right. Okay. As a result of today's discussions. Sounds good. Perfect. Yep. I'll Thank update you. the calendar and send you the update. That's really helpful. And as a reminder, too, to the um, residents that are serviced by Down to Earth, um, as a result of the June 25th meeting, we're back at um, setting up the weekly meeting with Billy and Allison at 10 o'clock on Wednesdays. Previously, it was Tuesday. This time, it's Wednesdays up at the um, Tiki Hut up at Calypso Park. So if you have issues and you want to come and meet face, face to face, um, they're there to, you know, hear you out and work mm -hmm. through your issue or your concern. Um, and compliments are welcome, too. <laughs> <laughs> be nice. But on Wednesdays, rain or shine, right? You're mm -hmm. there. So that's very helpful, yes. too. Well, except for lightning. Then we head to the cars. Oh, the lightning. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Because I know the, the first one, mm -hmm. Casey and I went up, and um, it was just the five of us. I don't think we yeah. had any. We left at one point. Did we have this any? This last Wednesday, it was just Billy and I and Harold that took the picture. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, again, residents have the opportunity on Wednesdays at 10 o'clock up at the Tiki Hut up at Calypso Park to meet with Billy and Allison about ongoing concerns. But um, I want to thank you very much for coming thank you in for today. Us. Thank you. And, um, again, I think the 60 days this is really helpful and I think also the opportunity to inform the residents on what's going on and I think the communication is getting better still room for some improvement but we're doing well and um, for Casey great job yeah. presenting those Thanks. thank you <laughs> and Appreciate good response it. from the community too mm -hmm. right so yeah. Yeah. again people are interested yeah I so, think it, it's good that mm -hmm. they're able to communicate that and, mm -hmm. and be heard provide them the forum anything any last comments um, some folks have uh, approached me that home watch for our northern family that all head, you know, the snowbirds, and they watch maybe six houses, and they said they have never in the last three companies seen the improvement that they've seen in this last month, oh, that, great. that their properties have not looked that good. Great. Um, I thought that that was it's quite hear, quite a summer. thing to hear in, yeah. uh, and in summer and, and trying to pick up the pieces, that, you know, Billy, you're doing a fabulous job. Billy also communicates to me probably a minimum of three times a day. Wow. Um, so every time he's rained out, every time he runs into an issue he thinks we need to look at, um, Billy has gone above and beyond helping homeowners that accidentally leave their garden hose on in their swimming pool and yeah. flood, you know, the neighbors. You know, Billy just is uh, an asset Thank to you. the community. And, and Billy's noticed he's here after 5 o'clock on many days. Usually till 6 or 7, <laughs> still running I see around in the checking. community. I'm on Vareo, so we see you down there, and mm -hmm. we appreciate it. Yeah, uh, thank you. You're not afraid. Good job, you know, Billy. The guys are done. They get done at 5, and, and I've, been, I've been here till 7 o'clock at yeah, night Yeah, and I've seen you day. late, and, I, and I've seen you yeah. introducing yourself to people, too, which I think is helpful, mm -hmm. you know. So um, yep. I think that's all beneficial to the community. Thank you. So, again, thank you for coming in. Uh, and we'll um, continue the dialogue, the frank discussions, and move forward. So thank you, everybody. Wonderful. Thank you. thank you. Thank you for taking the time to do this with us. Thank, thank you. you.